Electric day of practice, of course, full of barrels, full mm. of sunshine, and full of some Michael Vitamin D. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me on. Man, Love it. What an honor. What an honor. Guys, if you don't know who this is right now, he is our big left fielder for the Bananas, slugger number seven, Michael Deeb. How we doing, guys? Gosh, so let's start off hot, man. You know, I know a lot about you. We've been friends for years, mm. but the fans, you know, I want to be able to express how great of a person you are what your journey has been like, and what brought you to Banana Ball. So let's hear that baseball story, man. That's what everyone's dying to hear. Yeah, so um, growing up, baseball, football, basketball, tennis, volleyball, I played everything. Um, and then uh, partial tear in my UCL in high school kind of put baseball um, out of the focus a little bit when mm -hmm. I could no longer pitch yeah. and was limited playing positions. Um, so then uh, I get to college, I fully tear my UCL uh, my freshman year, and then baseball is out of the picture for three years in college. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I always wanted to get back to it, and football injuries kind of led me to a course that I would able be able to get my elbow fixed and mm -hmm. get back into it. Uh, ultimately, you know, played um, in grad school at Bethune-Cookman, uh, some indie ball after that. Nice. I was signed by the White Sox in 19. Short stint there, a couple of years at indie ball, and then I'm right back uh, deciding if I want to continue more indie ball or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I played the first world one city world tour with the Bananas. Yep. Um, after that was the start of the whole thing, yep. right there. That's Everything where all the entertainment started shooting through the roof, shooting through <laughs> the roof, kicking everything off with Banana Ball and what that looked like. And then, uh, yeah, I just dove into it. Last year, I decided that, you know, uh, baseball was fun, but mm -hmm. it's time to embrace banana ball and go full full boat into it. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, we're happy to have you, man. And having a leader like you that's been through college, you've been through a professional organization and been to all these indie ball teams, what do you think is the biggest difference between us and all those organizations you've been through? I think the preparation on the entertainment side. So, mm -hmm. like sports, obviously, uh, it's 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 all it's all storytelling. Yeah. And um, so we don't, as uh, professional baseball players and affiliate organizations or indie ball organizations, we are just focused on our part in the story being the play. Uh, we don't have any um, recognition, even a lot of times, of the. Uh, story that the entire front office and creative team is trying mm -hmm. to portray through the game that's going to happen that night in front of all the fans. Um, you know, I think that I, I barely even knew um, names of a lot of the front office staff in the, in the White Sox organization, not yeah. by uh, not wanting to, but just in reality, you just don't see them on a the day-to-day -day basis. You're not yeah, having that uh, daily interaction the way that mm -hmm. we do. Um, or the uh, rehearsal meetings where we're, we're uh, being told where the cameras are going to be set up, where um, we're going to enter for our warm-up, how we're going to exit the field, what celebrations we're going to do. Um, so yeah, the, those main differences are just uh, the, the focus uh, and the involvement you have with the entire team beyond your player roster, mm -hmm. but uh, your characters, your front office staff, your creative team. And ultimately, I mean, even our owner, uh, yeah. Jesse Cole, being right there in the dugout with us. So it, it's a it's a completely different experience um, as the uh, the focus is not just on the players themselves, but we're kind of one organization going mm -hmm. to put on this uh, show at night. And, um, you know, it, they're they're different um, because they strive for different goals. But I think what we do is special in that we get to see um the full circle of how everything happens in a given night. And especially, mm -hmm. I think you and I probably learned a lot last year, wow. just from how they're bringing merch into the towns, um, all the equipment we bring mm -hmm. in to set up shop. Like these are just things that, uh, we just never just experienced. Yeah. yeah you never, never really experienced think of. it. You don't see it when mm -hmm. you're playing for a really big organization. You don't see the time and effort that's put behind the scenes. And really it shows that success is in the details because we go everywhere everywhere is sold out and we put on the greatest show in sports yeah. so it just makes sense that everyone should work as a unit and as kind of like a little family like we are mm -hmm. and because that really pushes 
the train to keep on going and for us to shoot towards the moon. But when you were in the White Sox, now do you feel amongst the locker room that there was a little bit of like a family essence or did you feel like it was more an individualized environment? It, I, I mean, I had good personal re- yeah. relationships with a lot yeah, of guys. Yeah, you're a good I, guy, so that's why I want to know, because you, you talk to everyone, you always can relate to people, you so definitely, I wonder how that is. Yeah, you, you definitely build those relationships with the guys. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's a lot um, of just language barrier, me not being fluent in Spanish. Uh, you, you have a lot of now teammates that are from South American countries mm-hmm. who are speaking a different language, and they're learning English, you're learning Spanish. Um, the dynamic is a little different in that way. But it also opens your eyes to so many uh, different things. Um, you know, I think the it's an individual endeavor in that everybody's trying to, you know, pursue their path to the big leagues. Yeah. Whereas um, there is no higher level or you know uh, movement from what we are with the bananas. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you, once you're in the organization, you're fighting to do your best on every single day uh and and fans first entertain always but there's not like hey this guy might be your third baseman for two weeks and then he's getting called up to double a or triple a or to the big leagues you know this it's kind of um we're rolling with our guys and then we're going to try to maximize and plus everything we do along that way but we're not um so focused on our own self or our own performance all the times because obviously there's going to be spotlight moments for each of us and then there's going to be other guys having their night yeah definitely and that you know that makes sense because you want to invest your time and value into the people that you have because you could ultimately make those people better with more time and effort and you can make the show even greater because the people already know how it goes and how it flows Mm -hmm. through it with the white Sox. You're there to get better and to make your ultimate goal happen. So, I see, I see what you're saying, man. But it's great because that you're here because you have such a reach with kids now. And with the White Sox, I don't. I feel like you could have had this reach with kids, but maybe not as significant or as impactful. Because every single game, you have all these young men, young ladies, and even some older men and women that come and sign your shirt, sign your pants all over and it's even made into the hall of fame that right there is a moment for kids that will live with them forever just sign your jersey now what is a message that you would say to all those kids in order to keep them going through life like to give them some motivation with this game of baseball yeah i think or anything that's ultimately um you know why we do what we do at Mm. at this point um we're, we're, we're trying to inspire and I think it's just breaking down that barrier uh, to, to have a little bit more of a personal connection. You know, um, if I can buy 10 or 15 seconds with a kid instead of just, you know, ripping off signatures mm-hmm. on items and pass to the next, pass to the next, pass to the next, you know, I can have that 10 or 15 seconds that they're taking their time, uh, you know, writing their signature and I could ask them a few questions, maybe get to connect with them on a little bit deeper level. Uh, so that, you know, if they have a question for me or if I can just light them up with a question, bring them out of their shell mm-hmm. a little bit, uh, it can give me the, the opportunity to say something inspiring to them or, or maybe yeah. uh, just make them a little bit more fearless in their social skills as young children that are, you know, uh, maybe view us as, you know, somebody that's so different than them in, when in reality we're, we're all the same. We're all the same. We're, we're, <laughs> no one's better than any other person. And, no. and you know, we're just... Uh, on a platform and a stage right now, uh, doing something that's really cool and we're enjoying it. And so mm-hmm. to get an opportunity to kind of break down that barrier, impact those kids. Um, it's definitely like my main goal and my main value, uh, because, you know, as a believer in Christ, I just think that, you know, if, if God has given me any talent in sports and if I'm going to have any impact through the game or anything that I'm doing uh, on an athletic playing field, then it's to, you know, impact that next generation Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, leave it better than I found it kind of thing. Definitely. And we are blessed to have this platform and to be able to do that and to reach these kids. And, you know, we've inspired so many people already to play the game, which is, to me, is amazing because baseball has been on the downhill for years. And what we're doing is being able to really connect with these fans, like you're saying, and give them this light that, yes, baseball is fun. And yes, you can, it, it's a game of failure, but you can still enjoy it. 
-hmm. And failing ultimately does lead you to success, as we both know a lot because, man, we wouldn't be here without some failure. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a game of failure. And uh, ultimately, I mean, everything up to this point, uh, even, well, I'll say different from traditional pro professional baseball where, uh, you know, w once we're as, you know, adult age mm -hmm. catching routine pop flies, yes. you know, throwing a strike out of a, a yeah. traditional set wind up may mm -hmm. have not been the hardest thing in the world for us. At that point, we're trying to, you know, get that little last percentage but mm -hmm. it what we're doing is almost like throwing it back to to when you're a kid because we're sitting here trying to make new trick plays mm -hmm. to create something different that no one's done with the baseball before or done on defense before and uh so it, it kind of comes full circle in that and with that like you said brings a lot of failure but uh ultimately the game of baseball is a game of failure even a banana ball there's going to be a lot of failure but it's you know what you do with that failure how you learn from it and ultimately uh, use that as a part of your process to then find mm. that success. You're exactly right. And prime example is every day I watch you in BP. <laughs> and you're out there barehanding the ball, catching it behind your back, catching it between your legs. Yeah, some drop, but every single day it seems like you're catching more and more. And now you're putting it into the game. And two years ago, you were a guy that would, yeah, we're making the play, get the out. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go hit, let's win this game. But now you're still doing that, but you're adding some a little bit more flair with this trick play. And seeing you buy in as this big time leader who's been through it, I think has helped all these new guys so much. Because you're seeing Michael D be on, all right, whatever, bare hand or in between the legs. Like, dang, well, this guy's doing it. Maybe I can too. No, and it's I'm... getting people out of their comfort zone. So. I pr appreciate that, and that's. I think it's a, one, like it's ultimately a testament to what Jesse and his team are creating because mm -hmm. they've given us uh, an avenue to see a career yes. in this in the growth of what banana ball is becoming, rather than I'm a baseball player that's just doing some banana ball yeah. right now. But ultimately, my main focus is this. Yes. Where um, now that the uh, g growth is happening and new opportunities are coming about for us to do more and mm -hmm. more of this, then I think you have to buy into the culture and you have to really see what's valued and what they're trying to make of it. And uh, they've done a good job of, of being very clear with us mm -hmm. in what's expected and where they want to drive this and emphasis on trick plays. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a high performer in, in any arena that I'm performing within and uh, mm -hmm. it's going to take trick plays and so like yeah. you said it, there's going to be some failure along the way but it's something that I'm going to constantly work at every single day um, because I believe in any arena that you're working in or playing a sport or anything it's going to take the ability to uh, face failure and to consistently work every day until like you said you slowly start becoming more routine and better and then those things that were once, you know, not attainable are more routine and become attainable regularly. And then you put new ideas in to mm -hmm. then do something you've never done before. And then you just kind of repeat that process. Yeah. And which is kind of cool with uh, the trick plays in baseball, obviously, because it started with Coxie with the first one. Yeah. And then, you know, hundreds later, <laughs> you know, everybody's, it seems like, you know, Every every week is just like a oh, new one. What if we took this and then added this to it, or yeah. what if you? Okay, that one's cool, but what if you try this also? And and so it's uh, you know, ideas are flowing everywhere, ideas and are... it, it's it's a lot of fun to be a part of. That's great, man. And you, I mean, you yourself, your character being Michael Vitamin D, you know, that's just amazing because. It shows, you know, take your vitamins, your big strong dude and stuff, and it pertains to what we all love, and that's sunshine, man. Yeah. Now, tell me, where does Barrels and Sunshine come from? Barrels and Sunshine comes from basically the uh, my love about baseball being I love loud contact and <laughs> catching a barrel, and uh, even, you know, I, I enjoy some surfing and everything, and mm -hmm. reference to surfing and, and sunshine, obviously. I, it, I think when I hear barrels of sunshine or say barrels and sunshine, I just think, you know, obviously we play a lot of night games, but, you know, you're going out for rehearsal or BP that day, and it's just, boom, sun's beaming down, we're out there 
popping barrels popping and batting barrels. practice. You know, we're preparing for what we're about to do, or even that day game, that baseball field where it's just like that bluebird sunny day, and you're out there just hunting a fastball, trying to crack it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a uh, it's it's a lifestyle. It's a way yep. of uh, living with a lot of enthusiasm, and it, it goes with that whole vitamin D thing. You know, mm-hmm. vitamin D obviously get your vitamin D in naturally mm-hmm. from the sun, skin exposure to the sun. It ain't gonna hurt you. It's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really, uh, you know, I, I rally around the, the sun. It gives me a lot of energy, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes I replace my sunscreen with sunscreen. And we'll scream at the sun to just kind of harbor all that energy. In, yeah. You know? so oh my gosh! I heard I heard from Rack uh, <laughs> that if you stare into the sun, it actually gives you this kind of energy. Yeah, internal really? energy and like fuels your body a little bit, gets you like energized a little. Bit. I'm not promoting. No, that yeah, one. don't do I, that. I, 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 don't, I don't do that, that, kids. <laughs> but, and you know, sometimes you might need some sunscreen. You know, yeah, but, yeah, but uh, yeah. But I think we're gonna, interesting. We might try it. We'll see. <laughs> with some glasses, with some give glasses. Him a shot. But man, now did you enjoy the sun that much when you were playing football? Honestly, that's yeah, a tough early I mean, schedule. It's it's hard to say. I mean, if we're talking high school football, we played all night games. Yeah. So it, it didn't really That's play true. much true. of a factor. But I did enjoy it when I was at Notre Dame because mm. so many of our games are in the fall and it's cold. Yeah. So, like, if you got that 3 p.m. game or, like, a noon game uh-huh. and it's sunny, you're like, yeah, I hope it's going to be sunny because it's mm-hmm. going to be 35 or 40. Yeah, so like man. That's not know, fun. Right. Especially getting hit. Cold body, Ooh. running into each other, not fun. Not good. But not good. Uh, obviously with all the pads on and everything else like that, like yeah. and which we even learned in my career when we went down to the University of Miami, like, when it's going to be hot. Yeah. And that sun's beaming down on you. You better drink your Reginate. Yeah, you better drink your Reginate. This was pre Reggie. Reggie. Yes. If I had a if I had a Reggie Horton in my life at the time, maybe I would have embraced the sun more during football. Yeah, man. Um, but you you weren't even <laughs> mad at a little bit of clouds and being a defensive guy, some rain, just because mm. you know, hey, hurt the receivers' chances of catching the ball. That's true. Cool us down. Did you have like one of your games that was really memorable to you while you were playing at Notre Dame? Um, Michigan first night game at Michigan. Ooh. They just put up the lights. It was, at the time, it was the largest crowd in college football history. It's like one hundred fifteen thousand plus. It was just, Dang. I think that environment and just the noise level was nuts. I mean, me sitting here right next yeah. to you, like we could be screaming at the top of our lungs, and we'd just see each other's mouth moving. It's just <laughs> a steady like <sighs> roar the whole time. That's um, intense. Yeah, and I was eighteen years old. You know, freshman year, so it was just. The, a very new experience. That got you just, going. Like, that got you yeah. jacked up that day. Yeah. Though. So it, it was. It was definitely something that was memorable. Something that was different. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we end up losing that game. But uh, you know, it, 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 it was definitely something that uh, was uh, you know my freshman year in college football, kind of feeling things out and like what it, what is this? Mm-hmm. You know, how's this go? And it was like, oh, okay. We're that's here. Pretty, that's pretty better cool. Better show up. This I is mean, what it is. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, when I was growing up, I always wanted to play football. And I played a little bit, but I would just get absolutely killed out there. I'd be running back. I had no O-line, and I was just getting flipped on my back every single time We made I some plays at the Turkey Bowl, man. Hey, at the Turkey Bowl. <laughs> that was fun, Bowl. dude. You showed out. You showed out. <laughs> Put some work man. in there, Turkey Bowl. Oh, just wait for this year, dude, because now I got my own team. I'm yeah. QB now on. I don't uh, run anymore. You're with me. You're my tight end. Let's, let's ride. ride. <laughs> let's ride. I love that, man. No, would you have, if you got the opportunity to play for the Dolphins or play for the Marlins, which one would you probably take? Marlins. Marlins. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same yeah, page. Yeah, ban- <laughs> banana. Banana Marlins. Yeah, banana the, the, the banana lots, fins. Lots of Mar- Marlins. <laughs> uh, because I think, yeah, football was just kind of like a, like, it was just a, I just, it, as weird as it sounds, I mean, I just loved to hit people and be Fair. rewarded for it. Like, mm-hmm. because, you know, during that, uh, you know, puberty, high school age and everything, and you're getting more physical and in the weight room and everything else. And, and like, sometimes, you know, you wrestle with your friends or you get in fights and it's like, you're mm-hmm. in trouble. But this is somewhere where you literally can go 
run through somebody that's carrying a ball and they're yeah. like good job <laughs> so it was maybe an outlet uh wow that guy that, just got laid out yeah. great job dude great, great work <laughs> um so i don't think i actually loved the game in mm -hmm. in all the uh the pieces of the puzzle uh and that go into a football game in the same that i love baseball and i've always loved baseball and yeah ultimately uh, my biggest thing is i love competition yeah i love to compete in anything um, catch us on the pickleball courts. We'll get after mm -hmm, it. But, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it, the ability to compete six days a week in baseball or three, four days a week, what we're doing in banana ball is just so much greater than, you know, 10 high school football games mm -hmm. in a year or 12 in college, 13, yeah. whatever with the yeah, bowl so game. Yeah, you wait and so long for just the opportunity. So to much go preparation out there. and so much actual time to compete mm -hmm. um so that is you know obviously there's competitions in the weight room and all these things off the field but mm -hmm. i just love the ability in baseball that like hey you had a bad night tomorrow tonight no problem you're going right back at it tomorrow yeah and so, i do like that yeah that the the ability to do repeat competition is mm -hmm. it's is big fun, time is invaluable to yeah me. now do you have a baseball memory that sticks out to you big time i think when it first was like where I really loved the game was probably in when I went to Cooperstown when I was like in 12 nice. years and we were playing um, a team in like the quarters or something and it was like 12 30 a.m. because we had rain that day and mm -hmm. so like but the games just get pushed on so it's like the latest I had probably I mean I didn't stay up very late so this was one of the later bedtimes for me and like we're mm -hmm. on a baseball field and it comes down to the uh top of the sixth inning the last no. inning we're down six to four all right we got a man on first base and two strikes boom so oh crank, let's crank, go straight crank, barrel crank, yeah Barrel, right center field, smell ya, tie ball game. Nice. I'm fired up. We're going to extras now. Like, let's freaking go. Um, and then, funny how failure in baseball and life can work. Um, we played another inning, no, no, not zero, zero, or no run score. So then we go up. So I come back up in the lineup later mm -hmm. on that uh, and then uh, end up striking striking out and then they, they walk us off we lost it was like 1 a.m yeah it was like 1 a.m it was like oh. our third our third game that day like yeah. the boys were gassed we ran out of pitching mm -hmm. and it was just um just unfortunate yeah, right there but but that game and in the the whole experience of baseball uh in general like throughout that week in Cooperstown was kind of like i was like okay this is something i really want to do mm -hmm. and do a lot of it and do do it for a long time because it was it was just so much fun and um, the first time I'd played a, a, a ton of passionate baseball with just the aura and the mm -hmm. experience that they build around that whole uh, tournament. So yeah, it, it's different. It mm -hmm. definitely is. I went when I was twelve, and just being there really made me realize that I do love this game yeah. a lot. And seeing just walking through that Hall of Fame and seeing that this is where the best players all are. Mm -hmm. The inner competitor comes out and you're right. like, oh, well, I'm the best. You know, like, right. I should be here, too. Right. I want to be here. I want to be here. Yeah. Be, like, it, it pulls it out. Of yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> you are there, though. That's, That's the, the big journey. thing. That's crazy. So, you went from That's... 12U playing in that Cooperstown tournament to now having your signed jersey sitting there in our own section of the Hall of Fame. And it just looks so pretty. How does that feel, dude? It's kind of mind blowing because um, honestly, like I always carried myself to such a high standard, and so like not making the big leagues and not achieving a lot of things I wanted to do on in the field of normal professional baseball, uh, I viewed it as a failure, and and a lot of uh, goals I'd set for myself that I didn't meet, like I was frustrated with, and I was disappointed in myself with, and uh, ultimately to then think that somehow oh now I've accepted to to 
put myself in an environment where I'm playing a new game, Banana Ball, mm-hmm. like, ain't no way you're going to the Hall of Fame. No. You know, you know, like, all like maybe their own Hall of Fame, yeah. but, but this is a baseball hall. Yeah. There's no way you're going to be playing Banana Ball and somehow mm-hmm. some part of you. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even club, make sense whatever. when you yeah. say it out loud. It's two like, different sports. Even the fact that that our bananas are in the, the Hall of Fame, like, it, none of that would even cross my mind. So mm-hmm. it was something that was just very um, different and something that I never could have expected for our team and something that was just um, filled me with a lot of gratitude and yeah. because, you know, God works in mysterious ways and really in, in some way I think that it was just like a, a recognition of a lot of hard work and a lot of time, effort and um, that was put into something and then ultimately uh, using the platform for the right things of giving back to others mm-hmm. and putting the focus on uh, inspiring those that are next up and uh so to get rewarded for that in a weird way of having a jersey in the hall of fame super grateful for it and super super cool something that it's not even uh can't even be imagined but like even more excited for you know the young baseball and softball players names that are on that jersey that Mm -hmm. or just any you know person that is on that jersey that can one day you know go there and, and see their name on that uh you know, hopefully it, it lights them on fire. Yeah. To do I mean, you might have a Hall of Famer on there. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, yeah, that would be incredible. That would be crazy. Would be incredible. You could have inspired someone that could be right next to that jersey. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. One that, day, that would, man. That would be super cool. Yeah. Uh, but, Deep, do you have anything you want to tell the people, man? Because you are a man of just absolute knowledge and mystery. And everyone wants to know what you have to say. So do you have a message for people? Um, embrace the failure. Embrace the failure and uh, just consistently work and find a way to get 1% better at every single thing you do and uh, constantly ask questions along the way. Find the people that are uh resources or legends in that field that you want to be great within and just hammer the questions and use that information to fuel your own career or your own path in whatever you're doing um you know my dad always told me that uh he's like there's only one person that you ask for an autograph and that's if jesus christ comes back to earth you ask for his Mm -hmm. autograph otherwise if you meet somebody that you think highly of and you get a second of their time ask them a question or something you want to learn from them or, or something that inspired you to think so highly of them, you know, ask them a, a routine or a habit, mm-hmm. something that has helped put them into that position that maybe you want to go. So I think that's really my best advice because uh, I bought into that at a young age and was blessed to grow up around a lot of talented athletes um, in South Florida. Mm-hmm. And so every time I got to meet someone or practice with somebody or that's go just to a what game I was about to ask. Like who ask did you were you question. able to ask someone that you kind of looked up to a question like that? I think by high school, yes, because mm. my football coaches on our high school team were former NFL players. Awesome. Um, Bruce Avon was an MLB player and was my high school awesome. baseball coach. So as I got older, uh, yes. When I was 10, though, I went to a Marlins game. Miguel Cabrera got called up, and he was playing left field still because yeah. we had Lowell at third. Yeah. And he played catch with me between an inning, and that, Oh, like, that's sick. I was at that, that, that was like, you are the coolest person in the world. Yep. And I just thought that, you know, because I was able to throw it back to this guy and hit him in the chest, and, like, I was just like, oh, I, like, this is attainable. Yeah. And even though, obviously, he's just, you know, throwing oh, a nice, easy, yeah, just, nice you know, and easy, too. But the <laughs> fact that, like, it didn't burn a hole in my glove or, like, I was yeah. able to catch it, it just gave me a tangible thing to be, like, th- there's there's not this, like, superhuman barrier, like, mm-hmm. that's attainable. Like, yeah. he was once in my position, and he did something consistently every single day and, you know, got into his position that he is now, one of the greatest of all one time. Of um, and he's a great person. Great too. person. Got Absolutely to hit with great. him again once I was uh, post college with Ricardo Sosa nice. in Hialeah, Florida, and I, I joked about like it t- brought that to his attention. Obviously, he didn't remember it was years yeah, ago. Of course, there's of thousands not. of kids he played catch with and everything. But then you know I was like 23 and we were hitting, and I was just like, dude, 
let me tell you, I was like, it's really cool to hit with you today, but mm-hmm. <laughs> let me tell you why you. I think it's so <laughs> highly of you. Uh, and even uh, last awesome. off season, uh, one of the teams I coached back home, they uh, actually, the Barwish Dragons, they, they got to uh, meet him between a tournament game wow. because his son's team was playing. So That's awesome. He's a stand-up guy, too. Yeah. I actually used to take care of his airplane That's, at the airport. Yeah, cool. And I told him, I was simply like this, hey, man, I know you're retiring soon. But we got this thing called banana ball. Yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. On. And he's like, "What? Like you play baseball?" And I was like, "Yeah, I do." He's like, "Then why are you doing my bags for the airplane right now?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, trust me, bro. Just trust me. Look it up. You'll follow, love it. Follow, follow the process. Follow it up. Come on." <laughs> yeah, he came back to me like two weeks later. He's like, "Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Nice. Keep going. It's cool. Inspire the next generation." So that's how you can tell, like. A lot of these big leaguers, they want the same thing as we do. We want, they want to make the next generation better. They want to make them more stand-up people mm-hmm. that respect others and treat people the way that ultimately you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we have this platform now, like even this, to be able to inspire those kids and lead them towards the right path, it's a blessing. It truly is. Yeah. And I thank you for that because you do a great job and you're a huge leader for that. Iron sharpens iron. We're in it together. Yes, sir. I mean, you, you, you're this molded by the same and, and you operate in the same way. And I think that the coolest thing that I think you'd back me up on this, that it's we in our previous arenas of baseball or mm-hmm. any sport that we've done or anything where we've had fans or somebody that thinks highly of us. Majority of the time, it's people that are high level or want to be high level players mm-hmm. themselves. I think the coolest thing about Banana Ball and the fanship behind Banana Ball is I've gotten to connect with so many people that probably don't even like baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like you know, yeah. it's like it's like every other kid that you know you're you're in the minor leagues and you you play catch with a kid. He's gonna tell you about his travel team and how. Yeah. He, and we have a lot of that, but we also have a lot of people that never were coming to baseball parks before and mm-hmm. now they're there and they're fans of what we're doing and the whole experience i mean there, there could be people that eventually want to be a uh, part of a media team for a professional sports or theater not having to even do with sports yeah. but they're watching the content and mm-hmm. the, the media team and or they're watching uh you know zach or creative director mm-hmm. and, and how he operates throughout the course of the game so it's it's really cool to um, have such a diverse uh, fan base that is. is not only you know diehards for just the, the purity of the game itself, mm-hmm. but all the things that encompass Banana Ball and the greatest show in sports. And to be able to connect with all those fans from different walks of life, mm-hmm. I think it's really cool because up to this point, my reach was so dominant in only sports arenas and Mm -hmm. um it's also challenged me because now you know how can i ask better questions and how can i learn from people and fans and you know that have these that are built in the same that we are have the extreme passion and desire and a want to be great in their you know respective arena or Mm -hmm. avenue or passion that they're pursuing but um it's obviously, you know, it may be so different than something that I've ever done mm-hmm. or that you've ever done. And so that's, I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful for that. And I'm, and I'm very excited about that this coming season yeah. to, to really, you know, connect with a lot of those people that, like I said, I, you know, if I was only on a baseball field or only on a football field playing the traditional game, I may have never come across. So you're absolutely right Exciting. well said well Exciting. said man so you must be pumped for Miami I'm pumped oh, I'm very God. pumped it's gonna Miami. be awesome just all having of our people there. all the people like, there yeah, man it's gonna, it's be, gonna sweet. be sweet it's it'll gonna be, be sweet. a great time and just to see now the number seven Michael Deeb jersey in the Hall of Fame and now to see it in a sea of Miami Marlins seats it <laughs> would be oh my gosh that's a leap that's a leap right there and that's the level that we are now achieving and it's because we have been grinding so much and we have been good people at the same time. I'm grateful. Yes, dude. Now, quick question. How many calories have you taken down today? Today, I've been slacking because we had a busy day. Yeah, we did have a busy we day. Did, we that's busy true, day. that's true. But normally, uh, for like, probably, I mean, not under 6,000. No. Like not under 6,000 <laughs> in, in like fo- football life was 10,000 yeah. a day for sure. How do you even like, do that? 
Well, you're regimented. I mean, I literally had. Well, I um, have seen you eat, so no- I know. I, I, like, <laughs> well, we had a, a notebook that I mean, from five in the morning when you wake up, mm-hmm. every two hours, what to eat until ten p.m. when you go to bed, and literally like four different options of you know x amount of calories of like here's some good options for what you can choose Mm -hmm. and we had all the access to it um so like the football life it's different they're putting your body through so much stimulus with the weights the the running um just practicing with you know pads on every day and everything or just pushing the sleds like your body's in that constant uh you know burning output so you're Mm -hmm. constantly putting fuel in uh obviously with baseball it's you know slimmed down a little bit Mm -hmm. and just you know, not needing to consume quite as much, but you know, we're active dudes and we're doing we a are. lot from rehearsal to the dancing, to the, the game itself, to running up into the stands, to back into the, into the field of play. So it, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 nutrition is crucially important. And for somebody with a really fast metabolism like myself, like I got to consume or my oh, energy is away there. too. I'm not going to be feeling the barrel. No, no barrels, energy. no sunshine. I'll, I'll just be hungry. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep crushing food. Yeah. And, you know, quick shout out to some of those fans last year too that along that left field wall that would offer they me would give me food. Hot do- oh yeah, dude. Oh, I never even noticed times, that. No, no, there's plenty of times you were pitching and like <laughs> you just <laughs> ran over. Ground, there? ground ball throws it over to first, and Deep's gonna grab a hot dog <laughs> from the fan in left field and then run back to his position. That's hilarious. Oh, there was yeah a couple times where I literally was like hot dog in hand in my mouth, like catch a fly ball, nice. throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, it, like because of the content and everything, like, yeah. fans would love to like, you know, take a video like, oh, I'm giving this guy a hot dog. Or hot dog. Like, <laughs> Look at this left fielder eating my hot dog. Oh, you doing? <laughs> pretzels, pretzels, good. Cookies, yeah. cookies were another one. Cookies, oh, were good. And so, you know, thinking that back to Tampa, gas. I did have some friends in Tampa. I remember last time that I, that I made our little left field squad out there that uh, definitely hooked me up with some cookies throughout. The well, game. I hope they're there again. Yeah, man. bring them back. Come yeah, on, baby. hey, everyone out there, cookies make sure you feed deep in cookies left in field. <laughs> cookies in Tampa, man. Uh, hey, but I appreciate you coming on today. While I set up our next little thing, which is a game between me and you. And it's going to be of your choosing. This is something special we do in the Electrolyte Studios. Okay. Okay? And that is, we play a Nintendo Switch game, and it could be a, whatever you want, but I have three Mario games that I think you will prefer. Okay. And that is Mario Kart, okay. Mario Party, okay. and there's Super Smash Bros. So I was like an outside dog growing up. I didn't get to play video games. That's okay. I'm, I'm bad at all of them. That's okay. But... I'll stick to what I know the best. I'd say little Mario Kart. They got Rainbow Road on there. We do have Rainbow, Rainbow Road. Rainbow on there. Road. Let's go. Rainbow we got Road. some Mario Kart going on. Mm-hmm. So while I'm setting that up, you just go ahead and tell people your taglines, where they can reach you out, where they can get your yeah. merch, etc. Man, cool. Uh, well, you can find me at MichaelDeep42 on Instagram. Same on TikTok. Even though I'm getting better at the usage of that platform. Twitter, <laughs> Michael Deep 42 He's doing well. great. He's doing great. Or X, X, I guess if you call it now. <laughs> um, well, YouTube, I have the Mike Deeb. I have 11 subscribers on there, and it was to post my high school football highlights, which I just discovered. I haven't gotten into that YouTube page yet. Wow. But I might make a YouTube endeavor now that i found that there's 11 subscribers on there. <laughs> I might, I might get back on that if I can find out how to log in, find out how to log into it. Yeah, man, that's 11 that. you need yeah, right there. Right? And uh, it's about that's it. Awesome. Facebook, Sweet. my name. Yep. That is Michael Deeb, everybody. Now let's watch us play some Sweet Mario Kart. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Appreciate it, man. Of course. Oh, awesome. Thank you, dude. Respect it. Yeah, Jones here spectating. You just gotta be careful of the camera. Yep. Alrighty. You might see me get lapped, bro. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad at this. It's okay. That's okay. Because you're gonna double your failure rate if you want to increase your success (laughs) rate. (laughs) There's no way I'm gonna fail tomorrow in practice after failing on all over this Mario Kart right here. So, so this button is to go. 
This X button, is go. This button's to back up. A is back up. Yeah. This is to move. Okay. Okay. This is to drift. Nah, I don't need This is item. And item. Yeah, to use like a red turtle shell, to use a boost. Oh, I can shoot it? Yeah, you shoot it. So but you know if it's one? not that one, then it's the other one, because I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But we got this thing. And I don't need reverse. So just no, you X, do not. I just need and you just press these two. And now know. we're ready. Oh, yeah. All right, fans. It's time for the epic race between me and Mr. Vitamin Deeb here. I think you're in the top left. Yeah, you can just choose whoever you want. Yeah, we're gonna go. Who moves in this game? Ah, uh, I think it's all different. <laughs> You'll pick your own car and everything. Who's scooting? Who's scooting? Scoot. Koopa Troop. Okay. Troop. Koopa Troop has got a little. All right, all right. Look at this. <laughs> and you can look at your stats, or you can just pick. I'm just gonna pick a cool car. Cool. Steel driver. Don't want that. Circuit special. That looks speedy. Monster tires, yeah, those roller good. tires, Slim, hmm. Slim Johnson's metal. Wow, a button, a button. Awesome. Rainbow Road. We don't need so. Blue Cushion Standard Hot Monster. Is it new? Okay. Wow, this is a lot. Crimson Slims. Yeah, those look nice. Those look real nice. Do you have to get one of these things or no? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you gotta fly. You get a little flower, a flower yeah. ladder, a little flower ladder. I'm big. Heck yeah. All right, it's time. Now nah, I just got one. Oh, I have it on Grand Prix. All right, hold on fans. We're gonna have to go back really quick. Don't worry, Deep. I got us. <laughs> there we go. And I just keep pressing the same buttons because it will be all ready for us. Bingo. Oh, bingo, bingo, bingo. Sweet. And now we are ready, people. You want, there's three rainbow roads. There's that one, all the way to the right. There's another one somewhere. Whichever works for me, I don't even know the difference. Actually, I'm gonna do the OG one. I don't think I've, like I played this on the Nintendo 64. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the Nintendo 64. Map that I just picked. Okay, so this yeah, is the OG. so you'll yeah you'll get this one. Yeah, there were some yeah, OGs are the best, you know. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you remember a little bit? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'll see you on the other side. Moving. Hey, you're come on. You're in second place. What do you mean? Come on, baby. <laughs> come on. Getting some coins. I think Deeb's oh, hustling me. No, I'm getting cranked. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what just happened. I think I was pressing two buttons at once. Did you just pass me? I think I ran into you. Oh, man. Alright, that's it. Oh, 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 that was a good. Oh, oh, All right. Oh, no, who cranked me? Do something. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, I almost fell off. Almost fell off the map. Do not fall off the map. What's this one? What's oh, up? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I fell. Damn.
get intense. I get. I feel like I can feel you behind me. Wrong. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just, yeah, they're fireballs, you just gotta keep throwing them. You got that fire. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you see. Oh, third lap. Here we go. for the electric lounge thank you all for joining us today thank you this has been michael vitamin deep enjoy some barrels and sunshine people peace barrel be with you <laughs>